this is the San Francisco in the future sequence where there's Vulcan shuttles flying through the sky. There's actually this structure back here is featured um, as an interior with the ship flying in and landing. But this is looking from across the Golden Gate Bridge. This live action portion that's black in here now um, is some a plate that was actually shot in San Francisco, this exact same location with the bay water going by underneath here. And you know the water is, is part of the live action footage and so is the bridge um, structure portions there. But of course they wanted to make it look more futuristic. And so Matthew's painting adds these tunnels, glass tunnels. And of course he did the delicate work and the beautiful sky and this cityscape, which of course doesn't exist in reality. And um, it was one of a number of shots that was done for this sequence. What we're looking at here is one of many matte paintings that were done for Star Trek, the motion picture, under a really tight budget because the work was taken away. Matt Yersich was, of course, the uh, main matte painting artist on the show and prime, did most all of the matte paintings in it. I think I did about six of them. I think, on, again, we were working on a really tight schedule. Matthew probably turned this thing around in about two weeks. Many people assume when they talk about these paintings uh, done with these old photochemical trickery uh, techniques, they call them glass paintings. And a part of the reason that goes there is because before there was a two-part composite, like parts of a puzzle, matte painting method that came about in the 1920s, um, the man who invented glass painting, a young artist here in Los Angeles named Norman Dawn, and they would actually just take a big sheet of glass out to the location and he would paint the castle right on top of that sheet of glass in front of your tripod mounted camera. And you can actually pan and tilt on those kind of shots too, if you don't go over onto the framework. But I mean, the camera can be on a nodal point pan and tilt head, and you can actually do a little bit of following with that method because it's all right there in one pass in front of the camera. And it's still a very viable technique if somebody were to want to do that. And it's the same way they do that with hanging miniatures too. That's maybe 10 or 12 feet away from camera. Same with a big glass painting as long as you can hold depth of field from near to far. But that kept everybody waiting on location and on set while the artist was working. And that came to be a little bit too time consuming. So matte painting was invented by the same guy and he actually had a patent on it, Norman Dawn. And it was a two pass method where you'd actually on the location or the set, just place black cardboard in front of the lens and hold back the exposure on the area that would be later on a painting. So the painting itself then would be blackened in the complementary area so that you wouldn't contaminate the live action section that was already exposed. So it's like two parts of a jigsaw puzzle. But um, more often, and this is why I was talking about they call them glass paintings, the vast majority of matte paintings that I've seen throughout the history of Hollywood, um, including the little matte paintings that were done on illustration card at MGM for Wizard of Oz and many of those classic films. But Masonite panel, I believe, uh, has occupied more than half of the matte paintings that were done throughout the history of Hollywood. Um, it's a durable, you know, it's a panel board. They could also be done on plywood, I suppose, but you need to smooth this thing out and primer it and get it nice, uh, smooth painting surface. And it's easier to lean into this sort of thing and do really sharp lines and detail than a canvas, which, I mean, a big scenic backing can go on a cloth material, but when you're getting in tighter three, four feet, you're gonna start seeing the pebbly texture of, of a canvas painting where glass, which is smooth, and uh, you know a panel board like this just gets a nice smooth coat of primer and um, it's really uh, less um, weight than a sheet of glass and nowhere near as breakable and you won't see anybody chopped in half like that scene in um, The Omen.